Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, just outside of Washington, D.C., uh, my hometown. So very grateful to see all of you here. Um, my name is Andrew Nason. Oh, it's me. Hello. I'm Helen Hosendi. Uh, you might know us. Uh, we've both served as lead developers of WordPress for quite a while, although I've been inactive for quite a while myself at this point. Uh, we were uh, release leads uh, for WordPress for six major releases. Uh, I was actually the first release lead in 3.5 when we began the modern idea of rotating it every single time, uh, and then I inflicted pain on myself for doing every other one for the next two more. Um, we also combined have more than uh, 7,000 contributions to WordPress core, uh, and we've been around the community for, uh, for, at this point, both of us, more than a decade, which is really cool. Um, today, uh, we're going to talk about, well, we'll start with some WordPress philosophy. Uh, you're familiar with uh, great software should work out of the box, decisions, not options, striving for simplicity, uh, deadlines are not arbitrary. Um, in this particular case today, we're going to talk about one particular deadline. Uh, the terms of the president and vice president shall end at noon on the 20th day of January, uh, which is uh, in the 20th Amendment to the United States Constitution. So. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it's really hard. Uh, all of us have had to do with deadlines in our lives and certainly in launching websites. Uh, it's hard when the deadline can only move uh, with uh, two thirds of both houses of Congress and three quarters of the states. Um, so that was a bit of a challenge. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about all the president's websites. Uh, and we're gonna start with, uh, we're gonna go way back. So some of you have used archive.org before, the Wayback Machine, really great. We're instead going to go to the National Archives, a uh, beautiful, amazing building. You'll see the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. And if you go to their website, you can even go take a look at old websites. This is one of the very first ones. Um, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, President Clinton's website uh, in the 90s. Uh, it is very 90s. Uh, I I don't know the exact, I don't remember the pixel dimensions, but you know, this is like the 640 by 480 kind of things. Um, uh, you can sign the guest book if you want to. It's very exciting. Uh, a couple years later, they did do a new one. Uh, I, this, uh, we had to get this right. The flags actually were animated. <laughs> um, yeah, you may not like it, but this is peak web design. It's true, it's true, it's downhill from here. Um, this is another version of President Clinton's website, which, despite being the 90s, this is pretty close to modern web design. Like, we haven't really gotten all that far in the last 20-something years. Uh, it looks very similar to Kubrick. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I can see that. Uh, you know, the, the three-column layout, very classic. Um, and then we can get to uh, uh, President Bush, uh, and... And this is what his website looked like. And, and this was, I mean, to give you a sense, you know, we're dealing with, uh, there's a, you know, a lot of HTML here, raw, handcrafted. This is, there's a lot of Perl. Uh, there's some Macromedia Dreamweaver, if you really want to go back in the day and you take a look at the source. Um, but it worked. Uh, and uh, what ended up happening is that towards the end of the Bush administration, the Obama administration was coming in, they did this, you know, we have a presidential transition, uh, which we'll talk about. Um, and as part of this, uh, the Bush administration uh, had uh, really great, amazing, you know, uh, you know, career staff and contractors and folks who were doing this all the time, and they ended up uh, taking this site, uh, and they, they, they said, we built you a new CMS, and it's in Perl, and it's amazing, and it's like, super exciting, and the Obama administration was like, well, that sounds great. We just, you know, did a campaign for two years. We're pretty exhausted. Here's a Photoshop file of what we want it to look like. Uh, so this is again, you know, 2008, 2009. So the idea of like slicing up a PSD, I'm sure uh, you, you feel that one in, inside. <laughs> um, and so they did that. And so they ended up with, with, uh, with another website, which didn't quite look like this, but this is what ended up uh, President Obama's website ended up looking like towards the end of his term. Um, you know, certainly nice big hero image, which feels pretty good in 2016. Um, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, oh, and I should say, um, after about a year of that, of that Perl website, uh, they ended up finally moving to Drupal, uh, which started, I think, a bit of a renaissance in government, especially, for uh, choosing open source software in a lot of ways. 
Uh, I particularly love it. I think Drupal was an excellent gateway drug uh, to, open, <laughs> to open source. Uh, and I always joked, and I'm, I mean, very close friends with a lot of the folks here in DC who, who do this stuff, and I always joked, like, this is great. Convince them to use Drupal in five years when they need to migrate, they're going to come over to WordPress. Um, so this is, the, this is the last administration's website, uh, quite modern. Looks like something that was done in 2017, 2018. Uh, but this is not what it looked like on day one. Um, this is the, the header to uh, uh, President Obama's website uh, on January 19th. Uh, the very next day, this is the header uh, to President Trump's website. And all they did was they just <laughs> took out all the content, changed the name. Because uh, presidential transitions are really hard. You have just now, you've run an election for multiple years. You're trying to figure out how to place uh, thousands of political appointees in government. You have to make cabinet selections. And you often have to figure out on day one, I'm going to have executive orders, press releases, an inaugural address, videos photos, all these things that need to go. Uh, and there, this is, we need a site. And how does that work? And so you have this, this, this idea of like a presidential transition, which is quietly operating for months before the election, both, both candidates. And then after the election, then there's like, all right, well, one of, ideally, one of you is ready to go. Uh, and you don't have a whole lot of time to prepare all of this. Uh, and so, um, we ended up in a very similar boat on the Biden-Harris transition. Um, it's actually never been done before uh, that we had to start from scratch. We did start from scratch. And so we were in a very interesting time where we were trying to figure out, um, you know, you probably remember the challenges of that presidential transition. Uh, you probably remember that it was weeks after the election before the government uh, uh, did a, a process called ascertainment uh, to say, yes, you've won, and now you can talk to us, which is very important when you're trying to plan for things like rolling out vaccines or launching presidential websites. Uh, that coordination is really important. Uh, and so in this particular case, uh, we had never before built a thing from scratch, and we realized uh, that we might need to. Uh, and so we did so. Uh, what's fun about this is that I uh, didn't need in any way uh, to worry about the WordPress part of this because that was a given. That was obvious. Uh, the, the, the incoming Biden team hired really great, really smart folks, and they're like, of course we were going to use WordPress. Like, uh, no, 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 uh, duh. Um, and, uh, and then they also, mind you, this is the, 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 the Biden team, and many of them were from the Obama team, and a lot of them are familiar with really high-profile websites like healthcare.gov. Uh, wildly successful story, you might have heard of it before. <laughs> uh, and as part, of, as part of this, as part of healthcare.gov, we had to, you know, uh, it, out of this created the, the United States Digital Service, where I was one of the first software engineers. Uh, and. Uh, and worked on making sure that like, these kinds of failures didn't happen again. So now we're talking about President Biden. This is his, his, uh, his transition website. Uh, and the idea of uh, making sure that we are ready uh, on day one. Uh, and that's a real challenge for us to figure out, especially when we don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, when, uh, uh, and there's just not so much to do. So, uh, uh, quite a lot to do. So, we ended up uh, needing to start from scratch in every way, including the designs. Uh, and uh, Ben Ostrauer, who's a, a Wide Eye creative, uh, is insane, uh, and created an entire brand for the White House in about, I don't know, 72 hours. Um, and you can see some of that together. This logo you'll see all over the place, uh, very excellent. Uh, in, you know, we have an entire brand guide that then that the, that the moved into the White House on January 20th with colors like Joe Navy and Amtrak, and Amtrak Gray, which I really enjoyed. Um, and what I think is pretty amazing is that despite the amount of time we had to do this, right, something to keep in mind here, we didn't have a whole lot of time. Um, we had a brand guide. We had a color palette. These are all WCAG AA accessible. 
So I don't know about you, I've heard a lot of concerns about like, well, we can't possibly make the site accessible. All right, well, I had a constitutionally mandated deadline and I made the, we made the site accessible, right? So it is possible. Um, so I wanna go back to, to, to the idea of, of what it meant to be ready on day one uh, and the idea that you know, on day one, any new president is inheriting a very large government apparatus uh, this one in particular inherited a number of crises, not least of which was a pandemic, and the idea of rolling out vaccines. Uh, and uh, we didn't have a whole lot of time. Uh, presidents end up using uh, whitehouse.gov uh, and digital platforms and social media as an extremely important communications tool, perhaps the way radio was back in the 30s and 40s. Um, and, and time was of the essence in terms of trying to make sure that we could do this. I think there were, you know, how many executive orders were signed on day one and then ended up getting put out, put out online. Uh, in January was creeping up on us. Uh, we did this entire thing in about six weeks. Uh, so you heard a really great uh, talk this morning from NASA, how they're, they're and, and I'm not picking on them at all because incredible work and frankly far broader in scale and complexity in a lot of ways than what we're trying to do. Uh, but they did not have the kind of deadline. They were able to take a number of years. They're able to put a beta tag on it, which is not something that when I was talking to people, they thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, so not a whole lot of time. So I'm gonna turn this over to Helen now, who's gonna talk through a little bit about what we were actually able to build in six weeks. Yeah, so that's really the question we get all the time, right? Is like, how did you accomplish this in six weeks? And what were your goals? Uh, so the reason why I ended up working on this, along with the fantastic people from Wide Eye um, and others from 10 Up, uh, where I was at the time, um, was because good old Nason over here said, hey, I really want this to be a website that goes not just for day one, but all through uh, this administration and into the future. What does that look like? How can we have a modern block-based editing experience that moves at the speed that a new administration needs to move at? So. What I really wanted to target was having this true one-to-one -one block editing experience, kind of fulfilling that promise of front-end editing, right? This, how long has it been? Like 10 years that we've been going on about this. So this is where we ended up. I hope that you can see uh, when it changes. It's very subtle. You might want to look at the top to see when it's changing. This is where we ended up. That's the editor, and that's the front end. That is the actual front page of the White House on day one, flipping back and forth. So how did we accomplish this? How do you get there in just six weeks? And as he stated, uh, that included having design within those six weeks. And the design is not just your web design, it includes print design, right? The branding, the whole nine yards. This was uh, what we got in design. This is in Figma, uh, you know, whatever design tool of your choice. This was a big part and how we were able to accomplish this in such a short period of time. Ben was so detailed <laughs> in his designs. You can see these, uh, they're effectively sticky notes, right? Uh, they're Figma layers uh, of his notes. Uh, they're color coded to tell us what they were about. And they include things like dimensions, intention, interactivity, uh, character limits or you know, hopeful character limits, all of these kinds of things. And that really made our job that much easier, right? I don't know how he got this done in like, the space of a single digit number of days, I have no idea. Uh, but he did, uh, and that made our jobs so much easier. And what really ended up happening in technical terms, right, and how we developed this, uh, was we had a wonderful front-end engineer at Wide Eye who's sitting right here, Revens, uh, who's fantastic. Now he's at 10 up, though. Uh, <laughs> um, so Revens was uh, working through blocks uh, in, in terms of like front-end components, right? So he's out here building the HTML, the CSS, some PHP to get it into place, while we at TenUp were working through things like custom post types, making sure that the right plugins and all of those things were in place because we also wanted to be multilingual uh, from day one. Um, so as he's working through that, we're, we're working through the other end, we just get going right away. We don't need to wait for a design to know that we're gonna need certain things. Uh, and then as he rolls through those, he hands them off to us over at 10up, and we translate those into blocks for the editor, uh, the editing experience, um, and how that's gonna work out. So now you all get to see what that actual editing experience looked like. This is constructing a homepage. Now, you don't construct a homepage very often, right? You typically are editing it. Uh, but this is what the editor looked like. We had pre-inserted blocks, took advantage of templates, 
uh, in the block editor, and you are typing in place. I mean, even that vertical text, uh, you type in place. It is kind of weird to type that way, to be honest, but it works. Uh, and then we make it really clear in these blocks what's expected, what your maximums are, what you should do next, right? So here, you type in the things that should be links, and then you add the links, and then you pick a picture, and it goes into place uh, right there in the block editor. Um, and then, oh no, I can see because it's, you know, WYSIWYG that mm, that's not a good layout. So I can open up the sidebar, move that over so that it complements the image. And then I get things like, you know, latest news, pretty typical. Uh, sometimes the featured image isn't there or it doesn't work in that space. So we can actually assign custom images uh, for that space, pop open the sidebar, move stuff around. Oh, um, because uh, dragging around things of different sizes is always very awkward. Uh, and then we get into these things, uh, your little blocks. And so these blocks are all custom blocks. Um, and the reason why we made that choice in this case is because we knew what our priorities were, right? Our priority in this case was not flexibility. Our priority was being able to get stuff published and out there as quickly as possible, and custom blocks was the correct route for us. That doesn't make it the correct route for everybody, but you have to know like what your priorities are and what you want to build for. And so that's what these are. These are all custom blocks. They are not um, patterns, but they do utilize the core React components under the hood within these custom blocks. Uh, so this is the same block, and what we can do is we can flip it. Uh, and then we've got the same thing. You just type into place and you really get your true one-to-one -one experience. It really gives you that sense of security. Like I know what I'm gonna get, right? And that reduces that time to getting something out there, right? Because how much time have you spent putting stuff into your meta boxes? You hit save or you hit preview and like pray that somebody actually added meta to the preview uh, and see what it looks like, right? How often have you had to do that? And how long does that take to just keep going back and forth and back and forth and oh God, I accidentally saved it or oh God, meta only saves live and now I've actually impacted the actual live homepage before I'm ready. Um, so this really reduces that time to getting things ready, to knowing what you're gonna get out there, to not making a mistake because we don't want the presidential administration to make a mistake. That seems really bad. Um, so this is, this is how it goes. You go down the page, you fill out your things. Uh, again, in practice, you're probably, you know, messing with what's already there. And then you hit view, and it looks pretty much exactly the same. There are minor differences. If you are eagle-eyed, you might be seeing minor differences in spacing. Uh, that's something that should be improving, actually, as of the latest release. Um, in 6.3, which is where uh, the editor can be, um, the blocks in the editor can be iframed instead of what it currently is. And what that means is that the responsive design actually reacts correctly um, to the CSS. And what's big about that is uh, where you see some of those minor differences is because that responsive design, right, is for your viewport the size of your window. But if you pop open the sidebar in the editor, that doesn't actually change the size of your window. It's only changing the size of the stuff inside the window. And that's where you run into issues. And what we had in here, and what made this so efficient, and the, the big part of the reason why we were able to make it one-to-one, -one, is because this editor style sheet actually just includes all of the CSS from the front end. Uh, because we use exactly the same markup, uh, exactly the same class names, uh, just a few overrides to account for things like, you know, different spacing or inheritance, uh, and that's what made it possible to get this going and to make it one-to-one. -one. It is one-to-one -one because it is using literally the same files uh, in the back end. Six weeks, by the way. Six weeks. All right, I'll show you another little demo. This one is of uh, publishing posts, so press releases. Um, and this one I'm gonna talk through how we thought about these custom blocks and where we really leveraged them. So first and foremost, you can see the title has been styled. It is the default title field, but it's been styled to match the front end. And then here, I'm actually picking a category because you are only allowed to have one category. You may not have multiple. We don't want you to use the default picker. And then we actually put the date picker also in place. And the reason we did that is because we actually thought, you know what would be great is if you never have to open the sidebar in order to publish something. If you can really truly just leave it and get that one-to-one -one, like you're editing in the front end. So featured image, date, category picker, all of that is directly in a top block uh, that's pre-inserted into posts. And we can do a little minor formatting. You know how it goes. You're reviewing out of a Google Doc or whatever, right? You paste it in. So I hit publish. It goes. Seems pretty good. I feel good about it. 
and uh, you know, they can view it. Did you even catch that? We'll play it again. I hit view. It changed. That's really the promise of front end editing, right? It's like if we can make things fast enough, performant enough, that clicking of edit, that clicking of view should be barely perceptible. Um, we, we are a little bit lucky in that the header uh, kind of matches the toolbar and all of that, right? Um, so there's, there's a little bit of uh, luck and futzing around in there, but that's really the idea, right? It's like you can barely tell uh, that you've switched between them because we want you to know what you're going to get when you're done. So I do have to credit uh, WordPress 5.6. Um, I actually was on the release squad uh, for this release, which was a good time, but it didn't, I was not really involved in the editor. Um, you know, there's an editor tech lead and they're doing things that like, Honestly, like I don't pay super close attention to all the time, uh, but I do have to credit that uh, with our ability to build this the way that we did in the first place. And the reason for that is because there was a version two of the block API, uh, which introduced these block props, uh, where now you don't have as much wrapper stuff uh, built into the editor, and you can be more declarative yourself as a developer about what is the markup, what are the class names, how does this get saved, right back into the database. Uh, and that is a huge part of why we were able to do something like, let's just slurp all the CSS into editor styles uh, and use exactly the same class names, exactly the same markup. That's what made it work. Um, and uh, it's just, it's, it was huge uh, in our ability to do this. And um, I also wanna shout out a couple other people who are up here in the front, Aaron Jorbin and Jeff Paul, um, who are also a big part of us being able to do this. They jumped in, uh, helped us get stuff done, stay organized training editors uh, who were delighted to use this. I'm gonna say those training sessions were real short because uh, you could just get in and it made sense. Uh, there wasn't a lot of mystery to the editor, which again, just told us we had accomplished our goals uh, and we had kept our eye on the prize, right? Like we are united, we're not fighting with each other. There's no competition, there's no egos, there's none of that. We have our eye on the prize. We want the new administration to be able to communicate at the speed that they need to from day one. So I'm gonna talk about hosting. Uh, basically look like this. No. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, one thing that's really cool, and Helen was talking about you know, WordPress 5.6. WordPress 5.6 came out in December of 2020. Uh, 5.6.1 didn't even come out until February 3rd. So we, we were developing on Trunk, uh, launching on January 20th at noon on 5.6 and then upgraded to 5.6.1 when it came out shortly thereafter. Uh, if, if the White House can do it, I bet you can too. Uh, so on hosting, so uh, we had six weeks. We had a lot to do, uh, a lot to build, a lot to design, uh, and then we had to figure out where to put it. And, uh, and I don't know how often you've ever done a build in which you have no idea how it's getting hosted at the end of the day, uh, but if it's complex like this, uh, it get, you get a little nervous. So uh, two weeks, uh, before launch day uh, was the first time. So I was the, the lead on transition for all of this and I was a volunteer, like many others, uh, taking time off of their regular jobs to, to do this. It wasn't in the government or anything else along those lines. Uh, and, and you know, they, they brought me on because like, well, you know how to prevent healthcare.gov and you know WordPress, so like, please go make sure that we can launch a WordPress thing and that's not healthcare.gov. Um, and, uh, and in this particular case, like the first opportunity that we had to sit down with the government to talk about, so by the way, you might have think, been thinking we were gonna provide you some Photoshop files and some slices, but like we actually just went out and built the whole thing. Um, was on January 6th, two weeks before launch. Um, there were a number of things that happened that day, of course. I'm mostly focused on eight hours plus of meetings uh, with making sure that we could get ready. And they were surprised and delighted that we had built them a thing. Uh, and the, the previous administration was actually already using WordPress and they had some options and we had to figure out like, how is this going to work? How are we going to put all this together? Um, uh, and, and how are we going to make sure that this can scale? Uh, so we had to launch a site. Uh, you know, I mean, imagine a scenario where at 11.59 a.m. it's one thing and 12 noon it's another thing. Uh, you're, how you have, you know, you have cold caches, you've never really tested this at scale, 
if you're going to get the most traffic than you'll probably ever get any other day ever again until 11.59 at some future point in the future while everyone's clicking refresh waiting to see what happens. Um, and uh, it's a little nerve-wracking, a little terrifying, can't have a do-over. Um, but nonetheless, we were able to come up with uh, a strategy uh, that, that worked. And what was, what was terrifying in November and December, we're like, you know, what if, what if we never get a chance to talk with them? So we started talking about other ideas of like, well, we can make it a static site and like call someone at 12 o'clock when we're in charge and say, hey, uh, can you redirect the domain? <laughs> um, and we, we gamed out all of this, and we gamed out even more of this for uh, right after the election with transition and, the, and buildbackbetter.gov, the transition website, but we had to think through every possible contingency plan, uh, and we didn't need to use almost any of it, which was really great. And we were able to instead uh, have this site get launched, uh, hosted, ready to go on that day. So that brings us to Inauguration Day. Uh, and this was, uh, if you've ever, you know, uh, if you've ever worked on a major release of WordPress, this is the very much like the stare at the download counter and drink kind of thing at the end of the day. Um, felt a little bit like that, because at exactly 12 noon, it was an automatic timer in a config somewhere that said, serve it from this place instead. And boom, automatic, ready to go. Hopefully the caches are warm. Uh, and we did actually have some, some small, we dealt with a bit of an incident, it was kind of fun, maybe I'll tell it sometime. Uh, site stayed up, so that was fine, but we were a little freaking out a little bit. Uh, uh, involves, it involves SVGs, a CDN, a 404 page, and permalinks. It's great, it's actually good. Um, but nonetheless, we worked through it, uh, had you know, an incident commander in charge, certainly would recommend that for any Big Bang launch. Maybe the number one lesson here is don't do a Big Bang launch, uh, but unfortunately, that's what the founding, farmer, founding fathers decided to do. So here we are. Um, and so this is the original site, and this is exactly what Helen was showing later. Uh, and uh, I, I'm really proud of the work that the whole team was able to do uh, in terms of making this happen. Um, and uh, and it's, it's just so critical to make sure that uh, that truly uh, the team could be ready on day one to, to lead, to take over. Uh, and this is a very, very, very small part of that, uh, but it felt really good to be pencils down at noon because I was no longer, wor I was not working in the government. And I was like, well, can't touch it anymore. It's great. Hopefully there are no bugs. <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank you all. Uh, for coming today. Uh, and uh, Helen and I would absolutely love and be delighted to take some questions. Thank you. There are mics over here. I think yeah, we started a little late. We'll give it 10 minutes. There is a break after this, and then you know we'll be around. So we're also happy to take questions one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So if my boss saw this presentation, he'd say, oh, they did in six weeks, so can we. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, that was not our intention here. <laughs> what uh, resource allocation did it take to get this done? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a big part of it. That's what I meant by like not having egos, right, and being able to collaborate together, right? Uh, because we, so just on the agency side, we had wide eye, uh, both creative front end and accessibility. Um, and then we had Ted up doing um, primarily like, I guess what you might call backend development. Uh, so the, the development of the editor, uh, things that go into like plugins themes uh, heavily on the PHP side. Um, a lot of this worked because we had 24 hour time zone coverage. So a bunch of us are in US time, of course, but one of the engineers at TenUp is in Vietnam uh, and was able to uh, work when we were not some awake. Of, some of us also work, just work 24 hours. Yeah, um, do not advise, it, by the way, but if it's a thing that you feel passionately about, right, and I think that was a big part of it too, is we felt passionately about getting this done right, right, and that we made that choice for ourselves uh, to do it that way. I, there was nobody being like, you have to do it this way, right? It was our own sense of pride in what we wanted to accomplish uh, that got us there. I, I guess I'll also just add that it was a small team. I mean, we're talking 
maybe 10, 12 people total for all of this. Um, uh, but uh, ruthless prioritization of what we really need to do. Uh, you know, you can figure out, you, you could deal with quality, you can deal with time, you can deal with scope. Uh, uh, quality and time, a bit limited. Uh, scope, of course, we had to really be careful about. Um, and we also knew that at the end of the day, the site needed to work on January 20th. There was going to be a team that was going to inherit it uh, and that, uh, that they could then go ahead and build more things on top of it. So uh, in a way, you know, it was a beta. We just didn't put the logo on there. Um, but that, that ended up helping quite a bit. So, I, I, I mean, it wasn't uh, all that complicated of a WordPress site. Uh, I mean, many of you probably saw there, like, all right, yeah, no, we've done this, which is great. Uh, the blocks are, of course, extremely impressive, throwing Thank it you. out there. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, like, what really made it complicated was the White House presidential transition, uh, a complicated presidential transition, uh, and, and heading into government. And, and if this was, you know, a, a, a much less high-profile launch than, like, honestly, you can do an awful lot in six weeks. So on the block editor, one of the things I noticed in the top right corner was the Yoast logo. Uh, what large established projects did you find were worth leaning on and made significant impacts to the workflow for the build out? You know, we were, we were talking about this. I don't honestly remember what all of the plugins were on the site. Um, so yes, Yoast was there. Yoast was there, uh, a multilingual press. Yep. Uh, so first, uh, uh, you know, the first White House website that was launched like on day one in English and Spanish. And that was, I mean, that's an obvious one, uh, certainly to, to, to use that, that, that solution. Um, but a lot of it was also just like less is more, like let's get this. Where did you go? You already sat down? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, George. Um, no, I, uh, so I, I don't know. Like, I mean, a lot of it was like less is more because like we, you know, functionality ultimately was like the thing that we were constraining the most. I, we didn't even talk about like in the editor itself, we removed most of the functionality yes. in terms of, you know, font colors, sizes, all those things was just like, we turned it off because we wanted it like you, we know exactly what you need to do. The last thing you want to do is copy and paste an executive order out of like Microsoft Word and like get some random font thing in there. Like it's fine, right? Like we can strip out all of that, which is really impressive. So I think a lot of that was more, what was a lot, what was in there. I'm, I'm trying to remember the rest of it though. That was, that, that was the bulk of it. Uh, we did do a fun thing though. We took, um, uh, I don't know if this has ever otherwise been done, but the, on, for WordPress VIP, which the site was not on, uh, they have like the uh, VIP Go has its own like huge bundle of like plugins and code and things like that. And the, the, the transition website, buildbackbetter.gov, was on WordPress VIP, and that's the code base we kind of started off with a little bit. Uh, and so we ended up using in production on day one the entire VIP development code base that you normally use locally. But we just did it in production, which was fine. Um, and, and it worked. And so like there was a lot of that functionality that we kind of like got for free from things like that that was obviously very helpful as well. I think that also speaks to like how we could get it done fast is like, yeah, again, aggressive prioritization. Like, is it important to get it perfect on day one? No, right? So. Hey, so some of us are walking around with little pins that say, hello, I'm waiting on content. So how, what was the content development process like? Because it sounds like maybe you got that on January 19th. I don't know. So I'm a... I'm a software engineer. Uh, I wrote very little code for this project. I spent most of my time wrangling, as you can imagine, not only talking with the government, but also all the other transition team. Uh, and we had a, a fantastic, amazing team on transition that focused specifically on content, on everything from like, the, what should the president-elect's bio be? And which photo does the second gentleman prefer? And um, I'm kidding, but you get the sense, right? Like every single aspect of this needed to be uh, very precisely looked through. Um, and, um, uh, and ultimately, uh, you know, while that team was happening, you know, we missed probably every single self-imposed deadline on content, certainly. Um, but at the end of the day, like the site itself didn't have a, a ton of content on day one. 
Uh, it certainly had, you know, important, you know, what are day one priorities? Who are the members of the cabinet? Who are being nominated for positions? But really, a lot of the content didn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. It was all the executive orders that still needed to get signed, finalized, published, all of the press releases, all of the addresses, all of everything else. And so um, I won't say that we got lucky because certainly there was a lot. I think we were, we were making content updates certainly up until the morning of January 20th. And then about 20 minutes later, we started pushing them up onto the site. So wouldn't recommend that general rule of thumb, but it was able to work. But it was a, a really great team behind all of that, making sure that that can. So that was a totally separate allocation of resources to get the content together. And I'm saying this for my agency friends because there's like the development side and you guys are doing amazing work. And then there's this content side that's separate. Yeah, I mean, a te two people is team, right? We can say team if it's two. Yeah, uh, not, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's, we're bootstrapped here. We gotta, no, it, it was it, it very important. Very, I mean, it's obviously a huge operation to get all of this done, right? Um, the nice thing is that like the content team for the website isn't the one writing the executive order. Someone else is doing that. So a lot of the content is is ready to go uh, uh, with a very large team that is all landing in the government jobs on day one. So it's it's nuanced certainly in a lot of ways. Yeah. Curious, what's next for this project? You mentioned that you build custom blocks. Uh, are there any uh, inclinations of including full site editing or? transition more towards more flexible architecture. Uh, like you, you said, you've removed most features like fonts and everything. Uh, are there any plans to use the recent features of WordPress? So what's particularly cool about this is that uh, after January 20th, it wasn't our problem. <laughs> there are two people here, though, whose problem it is. Yes. <laughs> you can find them. There are a few folks. Uh, I think Doug Axelrod and, and Curtis Shaner and a couple of others uh, can probably, if you want to find them, I'm sure they can talk to you about what the government now, what the White House is currently doing now with this. Uh, but our job was really like get something ready for day one. Uh, I, 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 in particular, I, I insisted on, on Gutenberg, uh, which everyone was like, you're crazy. Not Helen, but that was before we had Helen. And... Um, uh, and I was like, no, really, like this has to be a thing that can then work on day two, three, four, however many. Um, and so that was, I think that was really critical of like making sure that we are absolutely ready to go. Not just with like a bare bones splash page that two months later we got to completely redone, redo, but rather like allow the team on the inside, which would not be us, to then make those incremental improvements and incremental changes, but being able to say like, all right, great, let's go figure out what the needs are over the coming months. I think this will have to be, yeah, the last two, and then we can give them a break. Um, so I work with a lot of clients who are certainly not the president of the United States, and we go through discovery, wireframing, whole nine yards, and they're like, eh, it's a good start. Like, how do you get through this in six weeks or however long it took you have and get POTUS to say, cool? Well, I mean, the nice thing is that, like, everyone knew what the deadline was. Right, so we were all working in the same direction of like this needed to happen, and you know the president-elect is of course going through and approving how many day one executive orders and how many appointments, and also like I, the what the website will look like, right? So um, this was honestly in a lot of ways quite easy because you know it followed a lot of the a lot of the design inspiration that was set originally by the by the by the Biden Harris campaign. And ultimately, that was designed during transition, and that was, you know, ready to go with our, you know, Joe, uh, you know, Joe Navy and, and Amtrak Gray, and uh, on on day one. And so, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe people just really love the hero images. I'm not entirely sure. But the actual approval process for that was relatively straightforward, uh, and was done uh, honestly, like within days. Uh, and it, I think it really helped, frankly, for the the in the incoming administration. You know, the folks who do this, they're like, you're the experts here. We need a platform because we need a voice. And you heard about that this morning with, from NASA. Uh, we need we, you know, our online voice. And so uh, here we were able to really think through, um, you know, at the end of the day, like, does this get across what we want of 
you know, restoring American leadership of being ready on day one of confronting a number of crises. And it checked all those boxes. It looked great. We were able to then very quickly move on. I will say like one thing about that that is really important is that this was not a, a web design that people were approving, right? People were ultimately approving uh, an entire brand. Um, and they were, this was like the brand that the White House would use. If you see the president giving a, you know, uh, hosting a video or giving a talk or something like that, like that White House, dr that drawn White House is used everywhere. Um, and so, you know, for, it was less about approving like what is the homepage going to look like? And it was more about like, is this what you want to articulate? Um, so yes. Thank you. Yeah. Great talk. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to ask about performance. Don't worry. No. <laughs> uh, but uh, you talked about brand. Um, and if I, I don't know if I read this somewhere, but I believe I did. Um, I know that this administration was keen on accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to share any of the sort of work that you did there? Because that tends to not take yeah. short periods of time. So. Mm. Right. Um, I think that we had two big things that worked in our favor. One is, again, like we had very clearly, you know, directly responsible individuals uh, for different things. And this was the area of Erica, uh, who was at Wide Eye. Um, and she was, and she is an accessibility expert and was keeping an eye on things as we went. I know Reavens, you know, was building with that in mind from the start. Right? So as we're building out these different pieces, right, starting from the front end, starting with HTML and CSS, right, getting it right then. Right? It is not an afterthought. It is a part of how you build from the start. Uh, and that is a big part of it. Right? Like a, a lot of you know, inefficiencies, I guess. Right? A lot of you know, the reason why things drag on so long is when you have to go back and forth all the time, right? You're waiting for somebody to look at something, waiting for them to approve it, waiting for them to come back to it, right? That's where a lot of things get hung up. And I think for each of us to take that personal responsibility and make sure that it was baked into what we individually were doing as well as having that directly responsible individual for it uh, really allowed us to have it right from the start instead of having to revise it later. Yeah, uh, I would, I mean, I would add just in terms of like a very clear commitment from the top was um, that, you know, at the end of the day, like he, he is the president of the American people, all of them. Uh, and it's important for, uh, for anyone to be able to access the government's resources. And that goes not just for whitehouse.gov, but for every government website. Uh, and they're increasingly getting very good <laughs> across the board, which is fantastic. And the culmination of hard work of thousands of people over at this point, more than a decade to really bring substantial change. Um, I, I will say like, you know, to Helen's point, having even just basic things like everyone understanding what our goals were from the very beginning, so we're not repeating ourselves, uh, making sure that we have uh, color palettes and, and fonts and everything else that are aligned and ready to go. Um, the site had, and people surely noticed, uh, toggles for high contrast and large text, um, which is uh, unusual on almost all websites. Uh, but that was like, that's gonna be a prominent thing. Has an accessibility statement describing like, look, WCAG 2.0, please contact us if you find something that looks a little off. Uh, and at the end of the day, like, uh, you know, it's fundamentally, it is a website with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And if you do that well, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna hopefully set yourself up for success. So. I, it was, I, uh, I take, I mean, I certainly great pride in the idea of, you know, multilingual, highly accessible performance, I will say. Uh, not that we talked about it, but like, we did not use that little like uh, HP machine from the 90s to host this thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I, I was very excited about that. Cool, thank you. Thanks. All right, thank you all. Thank you all.